Coming up next, the Dodge Hornet RT Track Pack. Hey guys, Mark Savage here with Savage on Wheels. We're talking Dodge today, and this is the new Hornet. And it looks just like a Dodge would look, right? The it is Dodge-ish, yes. Very Dodge-ish. We got actual air scoops up here to let some air into that hood. Well, this is a small, compact crossover. They've had this out for a couple years now. Uh, we reviewed the uh, the other version, the uh, GT version earlier. That's just a gas engine. This is a plug-in hybrid, so it's got uh, a little bit better, well, a lot better gas mileage, and a lot more power. So that makes it more Dodge-like, doesn't it? Yes. Hey, it so would. We'll, you know, we'll take our usual quick walk around. This is they call it uh, eight ball. That's why, because it's black. Black. I mean, you know, they, the nice thing about Dodge is they do have a sense of humor. They come up with some good names. Yeah, nice calipers. And, yeah, nice. And the red calipers on here, that's part of this package, right? Can, can I rip those off for my Durango? Oh, they look Durango, really good that, on my Durango. It's, it, yeah, I don't know. Check this out. This is their kind of stylized Hornet, Hornet. logo. I would expect you to see that on like. Not to be confused with the AMC Hornet. I sure am, boy. Never heard of evil can evil. Yeah, right. Not the, or, or the uh, Hudson Hornet. Oh, wow. That, that's that, way. That's going. That's, yeah, that's, that's on our yeah. way back, way back. Yeah. Uh, Anyway, good looking. It's, you know, it's got nice lines, I think. You know, got a little bit of a spoiler over the back, but that also helps get you, it keeps the back window clean. Got a wiper, that's always good. Does not have a power hatch. Paul, I actually have to lift it, not hard, of course. Anyway, so, you know, decent space in here. We got a pass through, and I believe those seats will also flip forward for okay. us. So that's nice. Uh, you know, it's a compact SUV slash crossover. So it's not huge, but uh, it's kind of safe, it's kind of sporty. I think people would like to, to, to drive something like this. And we'll take it out on the road and show you what it looks like. So Paul, we're inside the, uh, this is the RT version of the uh, Dodge Hornet. And I mean, it's a it's a pretty nice looking interior. First of all, flat bottom wheel, yeah. always a win. That's, Gotta uh, love that. You know, we got kind of red stitching into the seats and into the arms uh, of the armrests and all that. Uh, I assume it's fake leather, but it feels like leather, so that's good. Uh, kind of an odd little volume roller right here. There's also a couple of buttons on the steering wheel. But the screen is, uh, you know, nice size, but down low, so you don't have to have it, you know, stick it up. Half of them stick way up like that. I'll start to break. You can see it's a very busy uh, instrument panel. Yeah. Uh, a lot going on here, a lot of information. I mean, some of it's good here because I am in a plug-in hybrid. I've had 33 miles of electric power, 23 miles of gas-only power. It says I'm getting 58 miles per gallon, not too That's shabby. That's really right? good. Yeah, and this thing does have some power. So I mean, it'll get up and go. Uh, but you know, take my foot off of that and then you can still steal all the other stuff over here. But it's, you know, standard stuff here. We got a E-Drive mode button here. I can select three different modes. I can be electric only, I can be hybrid. Uh, or I can be saving my energy, my electric energy, so if I'm going to be in town more or something, I can have it available for that. Uh, that's nice. Everything else looks good, easy to get at. All these buttons here, easy to get at for your climate controls. Push button, start, of course. A sport mode button. Uh, you have to have that engaged and pull these two knobs, two levers back here, the uh, paddles, and that will engage your power mode on the highway and give you an extra 30 horsepower. So that's kind of like push to pass an Indy car. Yeah. That's kind of cool. Uh -huh. um, but I'm told that you have to have like, I think 60 to 80% of your electric charge for that to engage. So you're not always- Yeah, that's not fun then. And not always going to be able to use it. I think just being able to control it with the gas pedal is probably the easier way to go. That would make sense. Yeah, but that's not what they did here. And uh, just so everybody knows, you know, this is a Dodge, but it's made in Italy. Right. And you say, why is it made in Italy, right? Alfa Romeo is one of the Stellantis uh, 
brands. Brands, right. So they actually uh, make this vehicle for Dodge over there, and this is based on an Alfa Tonale. So that's a pretty uh, snazzy name for mm -hmm. another SUV. Mm -hmm. But anyway, and that one costs a little bit more than this, uh, you know, but hey, it's Italian, right? Yeah. All right, let's take this out. We're getting up to power here. Uh, Paul, we even got a little bit of an engine growl going for us there. Yep. And up into this, you know, 70 range here. Uh, we're going to see if this uh, power mode will kick on for us. Uh, but I want to get to a spot where I don't have uh, so many traffic cars. slowing down, yeah, like yeah. up, yeah, up slowing ahead. Slowing down up ahead. Okay. We're going to give this uh, power shot thing a, a shot here. We've got about 15 or 16 miles of, of electric power left, and we're in the power mode, or, or the sport mode right here. And then we're supposed to pull back on these two uh, paddle. paddle shifters, and we'll see. Yeah, there we go. There we go, right up to uh, well, 80 or so, and obviously we got to That was slow down. like a quiet acceleration. It, is quite it wasn't a, neck snapping. It wasn't neck snapping, but it, there, there was plenty of power that right. we had there. And uh, it says it gives you 30 miles for uh, 30 horsepower. And that's a nice little boost, but uh, I think it's just a lot easier if you're driving, just not to screw with all this stuff. Just hit that gas pedal. Mash the gas pedal. I want to mash the gas pedal and uh, go from there because what if I'm trying to get around somebody? What if there's, you know, the way people are driving these days, you got somebody going 100 mile an hour and you're only going 80 out in the uh, right. lane and you're thinking, I just got to get past this car before that guy rear ends me. Well, I want to be able to boom, quick get on that. And this only lasts for 15 seconds. I might, what if I need 20? Right. You know? Or if you want to do it a couple of times. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, you have to wait like 15 seconds in between them. So I was like, yeah, uh, that's, uh, yeah. yeah, that's too that's, much. That's too much effort. But uh, nice that it's available, just not what I would consider to be real convenient. I know we talked about power when we were out on the highway, the, you know, 288 horsepower, 383 uh, foot pounds of torque. And, you know, so this thing will get up and go. But, you know, it handles really nice, and I think this may be what is the selling point as much to me as the uh, speed performance of it, is that it handles really nice, much more nimble than a lot of the SUVs, even the little ones uh, and crossovers. So it really handles nicely, it feels well balanced, and uh, the ride is really well controlled. Now, if we put it in the sport mode that ups the power and so forth, I'm going to put it in here. Uh, but it does feel like we're, uh, I don't know, I hit the sport one down here, here we go, there we go. Uh, it, you know, boosts up the power, but it firms up the ride and the steering enough that I'm, I'm not wild about the steering being that firm, and you know, driving around city streets, mm -hmm. and the ride we definitely don't need to have firm. Right, we're feeling it now. Yeah, yeah, so we'll take that back off and, and make it comfortable for us old dudes. Yeah, rocking chair. Rocking chair, yeah. So Paul, I mean, you know, we talked that this, this is a little bit pricier than some of the other cars out there and stuff, but it is a plug-in hybrid, so that's good. But this is in a, you know, marketplace that is just swamped with vehicles. Right, and swamped with vehicles that are lower priced right. and maybe more value, like the Chevy Trax that we thought was going to be junk. Well, we thought it was not going to be the best car, but it ended up being very nice for like twenty-five grand. Right, and and you know this has all the zip and the Dodge stuff. Yeah. You know, I'm a Dodge guy, yeah, and I, I love that stuff. But yeah. am I going to pay what they want for it? Yeah, another twenty thousand dollars or something. And that's the issue that they're having with this vehicle right, right now, with a five hundred dollar or five hundred day uh, supply on the lot. So yeah, that's a lot. America's in, in today's not world really accepting them so well and, uh, and one of the things that we always say is that there was some advertising with this one this first came out right and then and nothing. then it disappears right you've got to hit, hit people over the head i mean let's right. ask everybody you know if you're watching this when was the last time you saw a non pickup truck ad or <laughs> non large suv ad on television right. that's all that people advertise I mean, and you wonder why didn't anybody yeah. buy a, a you know a smaller vehicle right but i think a lot of younger people are looking more and more for smaller vehicles less expensive vehicles they like the all-wheel drive which this has right they like the plug-in or the hybrid version right. that's what people like but i think that you know people are looking in that 35 you know 25 to 35 range at the low end right and maybe 35 to 40 range at the high end right so the uh, 
GT version of this would fit that, but this is gonna it's gas powered. Right. You know, whereas now when you go to the plug-in, it gets a little more. And, and I think what they're doing is they're putting all the higher priced Hornets on the lot. <laughs> yeah, that and, scares people away. Well, yeah, you get sticker shock. Sticker I mean, shock. you come up to this vehicle and you expect it to, you know, to be, you know, thirty-ish. Yeah. Right. You right. know, and then it's almost fifty-ish. Yeah. And they and these can get over fifty if you right. load them up. I mean, right. they're, they're they're different packages and so forth. But uh, you know, and then you compare some of the most popular things like a, a Honda HRV. Uh, Good a vehicle. Toyota Rav Four. Good vehicle. Uh, does that the cross trek that we just had the Subaru? Right. I mean that Good was vehicle. again thirty two thousand right. dollars all wheel drive. On right. That, it was not a hybrid. Right. But hey. But a great value. Yeah. And then yeah, you, know, you got Hyundai's, you got Kias, all sorts of good stuff right. out there. So. Good luck, Dodge. Good luck. I hope you know because like I say, it a fun drive. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. But. Yeah. Yeah. What's your purse? <laughs> yeah. Then there's that. Yeah. So the Hornet, it comes in uh, GT and RT. GT you probably get for about $35,000 to $40,000. This one starts at $43,000 and goes all the way up to forty-five and a half with the little bit of options that are on this one. Uh, it's a little bit high, I think, but it is a plug-in hybrid, so you're going to be getting great gas mileage. You know, it's comfortable for four people, and you know, you got a hatch in the back so you can throw things in there if you want. Hey, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Whoa!